The country's labor minister says traffic on the country's two largest rail networks could resume within days. The labor dispute between companies and rail workers has been set to binding arbitration, preventing a massive lockout to drag on. Under Section 107 of the Canada Labor Code, I've directed <clears throat> the Canada Industrial Relations Board to assist the parties in settling the outstanding terms of their collective agreements by imposing final binding arbitration. Now that means current agreements between workers and employers will be extended and operations resumed. Meanwhile, a third party will review the case and propose a solution. CBC's Tanya Fletcher has been following all of this for us. So Tanya, now that binding arbitration has been ordered, uh, what are the next steps? Well, Sarah, the big question is when will those freight trains run again? The timeline specifically is unclear. As the minister emphasized, this is now an independent arm's length process now that it's been taken over by the Industrial Relations Board. But he himself said he's hopeful that it will resume, quote, within days. The other big question looming is how much teeth does binding arbitration really have? And that question is being asked because you look at an example from last month. That's when you'll remember WestJet and its mechanics had a labor dispute. Binding arbitration was ordered, just like in this case. Yet the very next day, the mechanics took job action anyway. And it's because their lawyer said they combed through the wording in the document of the binding arbitration and said there was nowhere that explicitly banned them from taking further job action from going on strike. So they did. Now, today, the minister was asked in this case, how could he be so sure that wouldn't happen again? And here was his answer when he, he was asked if he can guarantee that binding arbitration will end this dispute. We're confident that it will. Uh, the C Canada Industrial Relations Board now has its own process to follow. Uh, it will be following that, um, and that will extend over the coming hours and couple days. I'm ordering the three things that I just told you I was ordering resumption of activities, um, uh, binding arbitration process, and extending the collective agreement. Now, on the flip side to that WestJet example, take us back to a year ago last summer, and that's when there was that BC port strike. It dragged on for two weeks. Again, the federal government imposed binding arbitration, and two days later, a deal was signed. So that's a different case there. In this uh, case here, you heard the, uh, the minister say there that the current agreements that are in place will be extended until new deals are uh, signed. Sarah. Tanya, let's talk about uh, how the two sides in this are reacting. Yeah, so we have just heard in the last hour from the union Teamsters Canada. They just put out a response saying they are deeply disappointed. They didn't mince words. Here's their quote saying the two major railways in Canada manufactured this crisis. They took the country hostage and manipulated the government to once again disregard the rights afforded to working class Canadians. It goes on to say the government took this unprecedented steps using a seldom utilized section of the labor code only because they knew their minority could not gather the support needed to pass a legislated resolution to appease the railways. Now, in the meantime, they say they will remain on the picket lines until they uh, see kind of the details in this uh, binding arbitration order. Um, both rail companies have also responded as well, much more willing to abide by binding arbitration. Here's what a CN Rail a spokesperson told uh, CBC's Power and Politics this afternoon. One thing's for sure, we are happy that this is coming to an end. We are satisfied with that. However, we would have preferred a negotiated settlement. And this speaks loudly to the union's inability to negotiate and to try to find a deal that's good for employees, customers, but also the North American economy. There has been repercussions across Canada. It's gonna take some time to get that going. But if we are in this mess right now, it's because the union did not wanna negotiate. And as for the other rail company, CPKC, uh, they say they um, uh, will follow the order of the Industrial Relations Board as well, but they are waiting for details around timing once the actual order has been handed down. But here's their quote saying, the government has acted to protect Canada's national interest. We regret the government had to intervene because we fundamentally believe in and respect collective bargaining. However, given the stakes for all involved, this situation required action. Now, keep in mind, binding arbitration is what business groups have been uh, lobbying for all week. Uh, given the huge economic toll, the rough estimate was pegged at some $340 million per day that this would have had effect on Canada's economy. And it's not just freight. Keep in mind, uh, hundreds of thousands of commuters in Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal specifically were affected because uh, the rail lines or the, the trains, uh, the commuter trains ran on the rail lines that were affected by this work stoppage.
Yeah, Tanya, there were a lot of calls for something like this to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. There were also a lot of people who did not want to see this happen. What are the political implications? Yeah, and chief among them, Sarah, was NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. He'd been very vocal leading up to today that the Liberals need to stay out of this, that there should be no government intervention, let the uh, bargaining, uh, collective bargaining process take its due course. Keep in mind the other options for the feds, aside from uh, binding arbitration, would have been back to work legislation. That would have been an extraordinary move because it's summer, the House isn't sitting. So they would have had to recall MPs uh, back to the House for back to, um, back to work legislation on a vote. And Jagmeet Singh said the NDP would not support the Liberals, even if it came down to a vote of confidence. Uh, and so that would have been quite significant. And after the minister uh, late today announced binding arbitration, Jagmeet Singh came out with a scathing statement. He says, quote, Justin Trudeau has just sent a message to the rail lines and all big corporations that being a bad boss pays off. He says the Liberals' actions are cowardly anti-worker and proof they'll always cave to corporate greed and Canadians will always pay for it. There will be no end to lockouts now. Every employer knows they can get exactly what they want from Justin Trudeau by refusing to negotiate with their workers in good faith. And that puts the safety of workers and communities at risk. Now, one more wrinkle politically talking here, hypothetically, if this had gone to a back to work legislation vote in the House, the Liberals would have needed another party to side with them in support. They could have perhaps got that from the Bloc Quebecois or the Conservatives who themselves are trying to court the Labour vote. So for now, that will remain a hypothetical with binding arbitration in place. We'll see in the coming days if and when uh, that certainly and finally settles this dispute, Sarah. CBC's Tanya Fletcher. Thanks, Tanya. You bet. Gilles Lavasseur is a professor of business and law at the University of Ottawa, and he joins us now. Gilles, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. It's always a pleasure. So walk us through what this means. They are, they're moving to, to binding arbitration now, and that's putting a, a stop to the stoppage. That's correct. See, what happens is that in the legislation, the minister has the authority to declare that arbitration process. So as soon as you actually bring that arbitration process, the parties are required to go back to work. So the lockout will no longer be in existence. We're not dealing with a strike here. It's a lockout, so it doesn't matter. Everybody has to go back to work and process the actual steps of applying the collective agreement until the arbitration process brings new conclusions and modification to the existing collective agreement. What's your feeling about how quickly that might happen? Well, the thing is this, is that the elements of bringing back the parties to work could happen tomorrow, but the trains will probably not start actually functioning properly in across Canada for the next 48 hours because you have to recreate the system of employment, uh, bring back the people, you know, in the, in the system, uh, start the trains, get, get the lines cleared up, get the things mo moving. It takes certain time. So the logistic takes a lot of efforts right now. But once that system is started, we'll see probably by next Monday or Tuesday a normal situation. Now, what is important to look at is what will be the reaction of the parties dealing with arbitration? We know that the employers want the arbitration, but the unions did not want that. So they may actually make a court challenge on the actual legality of imposing arbitration by using recent Supreme Court decisions regarding the right to negotiation. So that could actually bring some issues. It all depends how the cards are being played legally in that type of front by the unions. Now, and if they were to do something like that, um, that would obviously, would that throw a wrench in terms of things restarting up or would they likely uh, restart up over the next, as you say, few days and then move to the courts if, in fact, that was something that they were planning? Exactly. See, what, what happens is that they have to go back to work, but then if the courts actually allow, for example, an injunction, a right to stop the actual arbitration process because of a violation of a constitutional right or because of, you know, measures that have not been properly taken, that could actually limit. But that would be very difficult to prove if you don't have elements that justifies a violation of fundamental right when the situation impacts the whole country economically. See, that's the key thing that the government needs to do if they have to go through courts is to prove that not having a trained system that is functional that they had to use arbitration, and these are the data you need to justify where it impacts not just the train industry, 
but the whole society. They need to make sure they're well, you know, prepared to provide this information because that's what the judge is going to read. They're going to say, okay, yes, there's an issue of fundamental rights that's provided in the Constitution, but we have to look at the interests of society and the public, and then they have to balance those two things. And if we can justify that it has a major impact, then they will continue proceeding with the arbitration process. But the job has to be well done before you go to court. Given what you know about that court process and how it has worked in the past, do you think that that is a real possibility that the, the unions might go that route? Well, the unions will probably challenge the arbitration process. But the thing is this, because you're dealing here with a specific situation that impacts so badly the Canadian economy, but it's also our relationship with the Americans. We need to understand we're also dealing with the Americans in this whole them. We need to make sure that we remember that it's not just Canada, it's also how we move things to the United States. The cars, for example, Ontario, the United States. You have the wheat going, you know, in the Pacific. But you have all these things that need to be looked at. And so the courts will be more uh, lenient in trying to prevent the arbitration process to stop. They'll be saying, okay, yes, we'll continue, but these are the rules that need to be followed to make sure that your constitutional rights are protected. If they, if the court doesn't, if there's no involvement of the court, should the, should there not be a challenge of this order for binding arbitration? What, I mean, how does, the, how will that work exactly, the binding arbitration, and how long might that itself take before they actually have a contract, despite the fact that they would already be working? Well, the thing is this, an arbitrator will be appointed. We can't think that this will be resolved in a matter of a few days, unless the parties are willing to do massive compromises very rapidly. It can take easily between two to four months to resolve the conflict because every party will bring their own arguments. They'll explain why this should be in that process and how the arbitrator should make a decision. So they both bring their arguments and that there will be a time where they may have to have, you know, a, a pause in the actual process so that every party can actually bring properly their information, their data and their legal arguments. So it doesn't happen just like that. The key thing for Canadians is that the railroad system is running. The key thing is that the economy is working and that we're actually making things happen. That's the first thing we need to understand. But that means also that the arbitrator will have to take a very critical decision because it impacts immensely, not just in the salaries, but in the functioning of the actual employees' rights in working for these employers. There's a lot of there's going to be a lot of changes. And we have to make sure that we understand how far these changes are going to be occurring, the impact, and the arbitrator has to make a call on all these arguments that will be presented at the arbitration process. Jill, you've done such a nice job of uh, laying out for us how this all works. But let me ask you, from uh, your perspective as somebody who, who is well acquainted with business, was this handled properly by the federal government? Did you, did you think this is what they needed to do? Well, the thing is this. They could not play the actual back-to-work legislation because they already knew the NDP wasn't going to go there. See, when you're a minority government, you're in the pickle. You're going to go with other political parties, but they'll ask for their actual you know, agenda to be fit into the legislation. They only had one recourse was to use the provisions that was already in the legislation. That's what they did. They tried to work negotiations to work with the NDP, and then they actually said, okay, we'll go in the legislation and apply what's in the legislation. Now, what comes after... It'll be a court situation once they, they appoint the arbitrator. So the government is able to say, I've done my job. I've actually was involved. I didn't have all the powers to do everything, but there's a solution. The railroad system is working. Let it work. Gilles Levasseur, a professor of business and law at the University of Ottawa. Pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Good night.